Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. In today's What's for Dinner video, I'll be sharing with you what meals we had this past week. Our dinners were easy to make, budget friendly, and delicious. So if you'd like some weeknight meal ideas for your family, just keep watching. For dinner this first night, I'm going to cook up some salmon in my air fryer. I'd like to thank Auntie Nono's for sponsoring today's video. If you're a longtime subscriber of mine, you know that I don't do sponsored videos very often. In fact, I think I've only done one other sponsored video before. In order for me to do a sponsored video, and everyone's different, but for me personally, it has to be something that I really genuinely enjoy or that I'm passionate about, something that's a good price, a good value, something that I feel confident recommending to you all. And when Auntie Nono's reached out to me, I was immediately incredibly interested because because I've seen Mandy in the making use Auntie Nono seasonings many, many times. She highly recommends them. And every recipe that I've tried from Mandy in the making has been delicious. So I figured, hey, if she really recommends the seasoning, it's probably the bomb.com. I want to give it a try. So like I said, I was super excited when they reached out to me. They sent me this set of three seasonings. So we have the firecracker sea salt, the everything seasoning, and the seafood seasoning. Now these seasonings, they're paleo friendly, vegan friendly, gluten-free, non-GMO, kosher, and there's no MSG. So if you have any of those sort of dietary restrictions, or if you're just looking for a seasoning that, you know, doesn't have those extra fillers and things like that in it, um, these are a great option. So let me show you how I use them for tonight's dinner. In this bowl, I've got some vegetables. I'm just going to do some quick roasted vegetables. I've got some pre-sliced mushrooms, a zucchini that I cut into half moons, a yellow squash that I cut into half moons, and some red onions that I just cut into chunks. I've got my oven preheating to 425 degrees. I'm going to drizzle a little bit of oil over my vegetables, and then I'm going to use the everything seasoning. Now this isn't like everything but the bagel seasoning. It's called everything seasoning because it's good on, well, everything. So as you can see from the ingredients, really simple. You can read and pronounce every ingredient. You've basically got sea salt, onion, garlic, and spices. Now this everything season is Amazon's choice when you look at spice and herbs. It's got five stars. And it's really versatile. You can use it on pretty much everything from vegetables, proteins, to soups, um, on avocado toast. Just use your imagination. I'm going to season the vegetables generously with the everything seasoning, give it a good toss, and then I'm going to turn the vegetables out onto a cookie sheet. I'm going to arrange them so that they're as much of a single layer as I can get. I'm not going to be real worried about about it, you know, just try to get it in a single layer. And then I put this into the oven for 15 minutes, stirred it, and then cooked it for another 15 or 20 minutes. For my second side, I'm making this Nor Rice Sides Cheddar Broccoli. I've had this packet in my pantry for forever. I've got to get it used up. I'm going to cook it according to the package instructions. You can cook it in the microwave or the stove top. I'm going to do it on top of the stove. I'm going to cook the salmon in the air fryer, like I mentioned, to keep dinner quick and easy this night. You could, of course, cook it on top of the stove, in the oven, on a grill, whatever you prefer. I'm going to brush a little oil on both sides of the salmon. You could use melted butter. And then for the seasoning, I'm using their seafood seasoning. The seafood seasoning is, of course, good on seafood. They also recommend that you can use it um, in an aioli or on the rim of a Bloody Mary. The ingredients, as you can see, the spices include celery, mustard, paprika, brown sugar, salt, and lemon juice powder. Just like the everything seasoning, this is also uh, has a five star rating on Amazon. And so I'm just gonna sprinkle this generously on both sides and then I put the salmon into my air fryer. I cooked it at 360 degrees for about five to six minutes. How long you cook the salmon really depends on how thick your salmon is and how you like your salmon cooked. Here's the finished salmon. Then we have the roasted vegetables and the broccoli cheddar rice. Next, I'll show you our plates. Here are the plates. So we have the rice, the vegetables, the salmon, and then I didn't have a fresh lemon, but I had a lime, so I cut that into quarters so we could squeeze it over our salmon. And you guys, this dinner was super quick and easy, but it was delicious. The vegetables had great flavor and the salmon was so, so good. My husband is not a huge fan of salmon. I mean, he likes it okay. It's just not his favorite protein. I've been trying to make it a little bit more often for us um, because it's just really good for you. Um, but again, it's not his favorite. But on this particular night, he kept raving about it. 
And he actually went back for seconds of salmon, which like never happens. Now, to be completely honest and transparent with you all, when I saw the ingredients for the seafood seasoning, I was worried. If you've been a subscriber of mine for a while, you know I hate celery. Um, and celery was the first ingredient in this. So I was a little bit worried to try it, but it was delicious. One of the things that we noticed um, throughout the past week as we used these different seasonings is that the ingredients are blended together so well. They complement each other very well. You don't necessarily have one thing that overpowers the other spices and seasonings that they're using, if that makes any sense. So the seafood seasoning, I didn't really taste the celery. And again, I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just everything was blended together so well and complemented each other that the salmon just ended up being delicious instead of having one particular spice that overwhelmed everything else. I hope that makes sense. But such a quick and easy dinner. I highly recommend you all give this a try. That salmon in the air fryer, especially with the seasoning, was just so, so yummy. dinner this night we were in kentucky we went to a place called co's steakhouse my family and i have been going there for as long as i can remember i think even before i could actually eat there <laughs> um but anyway it's, they're a steakhouse but they're really known for their fried catfish i didn't get a picture of everyone's plate but here is a picture of what i had i had their small catfish plate which is three pieces of fried catfish two hush puppies and then you get two sides so i did their homemade macaroni and cheese and their fried apples. This was delicious. The next day was the Super Bowl, so we made some snacks to eat while we watched the game, mostly the halftime show, to be honest. I am going to preheat the oven to 350 degrees. I'll link the recipe in the description box below. I did half the recipe. To this bowl, I'm adding in some softened cream cheese, and then you don't have to do this, but I took a mixer and just kind of whipped up the cream cheese a little bit. Next, I'm going to add the ranch dressing. Use your favorite ranch dressing. You could also use homemade. Now I'm going to add the buffalo sauce. Again, use your favorite. I have this sweet baby rays on hand, so that's what I'm going to use up. I'm going to add in my chicken. You can cook up a chicken, use leftover rotisserie chicken. You could even use canned chicken. This is just uh, shredded chicken that I had in my freezer that I pulled out and thawed. I'm going to add in my cheese. Stir it until it's combined really well. I'm going to place that into a greased casserole dish. I just used a foil pan for easy cleanup. We had driven back home this day and we, you know, were unpacking and then we uh, went and got happy from the border and all that. So I was just going for quick and easy this night. So I added some additional uh, cheddar cheese on top of the buffalo chicken dip. I'm going to pop this into the oven. I cooked this for about 15 or 20 minutes. You just want to cook it until it's nice and bubbly. All right, here's our little Super Bowl spread. This was just for the two of us. It is a lot of food. We had not eaten anything at all this entire day, and we had tons of leftovers and had it for lunch the next day. So we have the buffalo chicken dip. I set out some tortilla chips and some carrots and celery sticks to go along with that. I made some bacon wrapped crackers. This is the Pioneer Woman's recipe. I've shared this before on my channel. I did it a little bit differently though this time. Instead of adding Parmesan cheese to the bacon crackers, I added brown sugar and they were delicious. So incredibly good. I'll have that linked in the description box below. I made the Crescent Roll vegetable pizza. This is delicious. It's by far one of my favorite appetizers. I could just eat the entire thing by myself. Um, and then we have the sliders. So I had some Hawaiian rolls on hand that needed to be used up. I had some Swiss cheese and ham. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'll just make some ham and Swiss sliders. I've showed these before on my channel, mentioned them several times. We love them. They're delicious. I'll link the video in the description box below the recipe. Um, but it's really simple. It's just ham, Swiss cheese, some Hawaiian rolls, and then I mix together some melted butter, Worcestershire sauce, onion powder, and poppy seeds. Brush that over the rolls, cover it with foil, and bake it at 350 degrees for about 15 or 20 minutes until everything's melted. I also made some crockpot meatballs. These are just meatballs. I get these meatballs at the dollar store at Dollar General. It, this bag is like, I want to say two something, uh, but they're actually really yummy. So I just took those frozen meatballs, added some barbecue sauce, some grape jelly. I wanted to add some pepper jelly, but I didn't have any on hand and I couldn't find any at the grocery store. So I just used grape jelly and then I just cooked these on high for a couple hours. Here's the plate. This was delicious. So good. And like I said, we had tons to eat and graze on throughout the game and we had a lot left over for lunch the next day. 
The next day was Valentine's Day. If you celebrate Valentine's Day, I hope you had a great day. For me, it was awesome for many reasons, but one of which was I did no cooking that day. Yay! I love cooking, but you know what? Sometimes it's just nice not to have to worry about doing the dishes and cleaning up the kitchen and all that. It's good to take a day off every once in a while. So on this day, my husband got us donuts for breakfast that morning, and then he had really been wanting Buffalo Wild Wings. Not at all romantic, but hey, you know what? They say the way to a man's heart is through his stomach, and my hubby wanted buffalo wings, so that's where we went, and he loved it. So for dinner this night, there is a couple local to us. They have a company. They do like catering, but they also do charcuterie boards. I've gotten a couple of charcuterie boards from them in the past, and they were doing like this Valentine's Day picnic special, and so that's what we did this Valentine's Day. Let me show you um, kind of what that package looked like, what we had that night. Here's everything that they dropped off for our Valentine's Day living room picnic. You could choose whatever kind of wine you wanted. We're not alcohol drinkers, so they gave us this lemon soda. I'm usually not a fan of lemon sodas, but this was delicious. It was really good. Next, we have a bag of homemade potato chips. These homemade potato chips were so, so delicious. Then we have some pasta salad, and it was cute. They used a little heart-shaped uh, pasta for the pasta and the pasta salad. They gave us these heart-shaped bowls slash plates. And then we have some chocolate fondue, some crackers, some cute little festive napkins, various chocolates. And then these two sandwiches in the middle, these were delicious. They were so good. It was like a pesto chicken salad and there was some uh, prosciutto on there, some greens, some fresh mozzarella cheese, roasted red peppers. It was so, so good, so much flavor. And then we have a charcuterie board with just different things to snack on. And then it's half a charcuterie board and then the other half are dippers for the chocolate fondue. So we didn't sit on the living room floor and have the picnic that way, but we set everything up on our ottoman and just kind of sat on the couch and we ended up watching The Proposal. That movie is so funny. I love Sandra Bullock. She's, she's so funny in that. But, and then Betty White. I mean, how can you go wrong with Miss Betty? Um, but anyway, so... We did that. This was delicious. It was so good. And like I said, it was so nice to just kind of relax and snack and watch our movie and not have to cook, not have any dishes to clean up. That was our dinner this night. For dinner the next night, we had leftovers. So we had some leftover from the charcuterie picnic and the Super Bowl still. So that's what my husband had for dinner. He just had an assortment of leftovers. And then for me, I didn't get a picture of my plate. I forgot. This is a picture from lunch that day. I'd posted it on Instagram, but for dinner, I just warmed up the leftovers. So it's the same thing. These are uh, Jess and the Boys cowboy beans. I've shared this before on my channel. I'll have their video linked in the description box below. These are really yummy. Um, so like I said, I just warmed up that for myself for dinner. My husband ate the leftover charcuterie and Super Bowl snacks, and that was our dinner this night. For dinner the next night, I'm making homemade sweet and sour chicken and egg rolls. Couple quick notes. One, I've made these for years. I never follow recipes. I just eyeball everything. I will do my best to try to find recipes similar to what I do and link them in the description box below if you're someone who's just more comfortable following along with the recipe. And secondly, I do not in any way, shape, form, or fashion claim that these are authentic Asian Chinese recipes. They're not, but they are yummy. So let me show you how I like to make this. I'm going to start out by making my egg roll filling. I like to let this cool for a couple hours before I make my egg rolls. Here's what I'm using. I like to use coleslaw mix because it has cabbage and carrots. I add a little bit of soy sauce, a little bit of ground ginger, and I decided to use the Auntie no -No's Everything Seasoning, and then just a little sprinkle of the firecracker salt. I really didn't add a lot. I didn't want it to be super spicy. I just wanted to add just a tiny little kick of heat in the background. So all I did was add a little bit of oil to my skillet, Add everything to the skillet and then I cooked it on about medium low heat for about 10 minutes until everything was wilted. Give it a taste and adjust the seasonings to your taste. And then like I said, set this aside and let it cool completely. Next, I'm ready to assemble the egg roll. So I'm going to take an egg roll wrapper and lay it to where one of the corners is facing me. I'm going to take some of the filling Add it to the corner closest to me and then just roll that side up over the egg roll. 
take the sides and fold them towards the center and then keep rolling. And then once I get to the end, I like to take just a little bit of cold water and add that to the end of the wrapper and then roll it up to seal it. And that's it. Now don't judge me on my egg roll wrapping skills. Again, I don't claim to be a professional. I just do the best that I can, but it doesn't really matter how they look. They're going to be delicious. Now, normally when I make egg rolls, I will air fry them or bake them in the oven. I've mentioned before on my channel that I hate deep frying foods, but I really wanted to make homemade sweet and sour chicken. And so I knew I was going to have to fry the chicken anyway so I said you know what I'm just gonna fry the egg rolls so I fried them at 350 degrees for I don't know maybe three to five minutes just until they're golden brown and I'm going to add them to a wire rack that's over cookie sheets when they're done Next, I'm going to start the sweet and sour sauce. If you look on Pinterest, you'll find many different versions of sweet and sour sauce. Um, any of those are fine. If you have a recipe, use that. This is the way that my dad taught me, so that's how I like to make it. It's really easy. Basically, just add ketchup to a small saucepan. I like to add a little dash of soy sauce. Sometimes I add it, sometimes I don't. It just gives good flavor. I'm going to add some lemon juice for the sour part. You can also use vinegar if you'd prefer. And then you'll need quite a bit of sugar. It's basically almost equal parts sugar and ketchup. Yes, it's a lot of sugar, not particularly healthy, not something you want to eat all the time. And then I like to add just a couple tablespoons of water to thin it out. I'm going to give that a good whisk and then cook this on about medium low heat um, for about five to 10 minutes, or you can cook it as long as it takes, you know, for the chicken and everything else to cook. Just make sure you keep it on a low temperature and you give it a stir every once in a while. To keep it easy tonight, I'm just going to cook this 90 second jasmine rice packet. You can of course steam up some white rice, you can make some fried rice, whatever you prefer. Next, I'm going to start on the chicken. So in this bowl, I have a chicken breast that I cut into chunks. In this bowl, I'm going to make my batter, so I like to use cornstarch. I'm going to add a little bit of the anti no -Nos Everything seasoning and then some ground ginger powder. Next, I'm adding the all-purpose flour baking powder, and then I'm going to stir everything until it's really well combined. Next, I'm going to whisk in some cool water, and you want to whisk in enough water to where it's a smooth batter. You don't want it to be really, really super thick, but you don't want it to be really thin like a funnel cake or pancake batter, if that makes sense. So I'm going to set the batter aside, and then I'm going to season the chicken with some of the everything seasoning and a little salt. I'm going to toss the seasoning with the chicken, and then I'll dip the chicken into the batter. The oil is preheated to 350 degrees. I'm dipping the chicken into the batter and then placing it carefully into the hot oil. You wanna cook this for maybe three to five minutes or until the chicken is at least 165 degrees internal temperature. Be careful not to overload the oil. Um, that'll make the temperature drop, so you'll wanna do this in batches. Now with all this fried heavy food, we need something green on the plate. <laughs> so I had some fresh broccoli that I decided to steam up. You can do this over the stove, of course. I cut the broccoli into florets, placed it into a bowl, added a couple tablespoons of water, covered it with plastic wrap, and I microwaved it for about four or five minutes. And once it comes out, I'll take just a little pat of butter, add that and some salt and pepper, and then the broccoli will be done. And just like with the egg rolls, when the chicken came out of the deep fryer, I added it to this cookie sheet that I lined with the wire racks. Then we have the steamed broccoli, the microwavable rice, and the sweet and sour sauce. Next, I'll show you our plates. Here are the plates. So we've got the egg rolls, the sauce, the rice, broccoli, and chicken. This was delicious. So, so good. My husband was so cute. He was eating the chicken, and all of a sudden he goes, this chicken, he's like, these are just tender little pillows of deliciousness. And they were, they were really, really good. Um, this was such a good dinner. And with the anti nono seasoning, if you are interested in taking a look at them, I'll have their website listed in the description box below. You can also find them on Amazon. I do have a discount code for you. It's Megan's Kitchen 15. Megan again is M-A-E-G-E. In. So Megan's Kitchen 15, it'll be in the description box below. I'll also have my link down there. You get 15% off. Um, so like I said, I'll have that information down below if you're interested in taking a look. We've been using these seasonings throughout the week and no matter what we've used them in, we've really enjoyed them. So I'm excited to look for different recipes and different ways that I can use these seasonings in. For the last dinner in this week's video, I'm making chicken wings. To go along with the chicken wings, I'm making a copycat Ruby Tuesday pasta salad. I've shared this before on my channel, but I shared it in a what's for lunch video, and I know not all of my subscribers 
um, watch those types of videos. So I wanted to go ahead and include it here. It's one of my favorite pasta salads by far. I make it all the time. In this bowl, I'm adding in some mayonnaise and ranch dressing. I'm going to use some of the anti no -Nos everything seasoning, and I'm going to stir that until it's combined really well. Next, I'm going to add some cubed ham, some diced green bell pepper, and then some frozen peas that I have defrosted. Now, this is what I'm adding because this is what uh, Ruby Tuesday uses. You can, of course, switch this up. If you don't like an ingredient, swap it out. If you wanna add some cheese or other vegetables, you do you, it's your kitchen. So once I've added all the fixings, so to speak, for the pasta salad, I'm going to add in my rotini pasta. I cooked this according to the package instructions, rinsed it with cold water, drained it really well. I'm going to stir that until it's combined and then cover this with a lid and place this into the refrigerator um, yeah, I mean, you can do it overnight. You can do it a couple hours in advance, but I would say at least for 30 minutes um, just to allow the flavors to combine. I had these chicken wings in my freezer. I wanted to use them up, so I thawed them overnight. And look at this amazing deal I got. So this package of wings was originally $5.23. I got these at Target and it had a $3 off coupon. So I got all of these chicken wings for $2.23. You cannot beat that. Super, super good deal. So I took the chicken wings, I separated them into the flats and drumsticks. I cut off the wing tip. I patted them dry with paper towels really, really well. And I'm going to add them to this bowl. Next, I'm going to toss the wings in a little bit of oil because I'm going to put these into the air fryer. I would also toss them in oil if you're going to bake them in the oven, but if you're deep frying them, of course, you don't need to use the oil. For the chicken wings, I'm using the Auntie Nono's Firecracker Sea Salt to season up the wings. When I was reading through everything, it suggested to use the seasoning on chicken wings. You could also use it on pizza, popcorn, chili, uh, egg on toast or avocado toast, or in a vinaigrette. I'm going to season the chicken wings pretty generously generously with that. I also added just a little bit of pepper and then I'm going to give that a really good toss. Now I just wanted to show this to you real quick. So here is the size of the Auntie Nono's firecracker sea salt and then here is a container of garlic powder that I just got from Walmart and you can see the difference in the sizes. So normal quote unquote uh, size uh, bottles for seasonings are about three ounces and these bottles from Auntie Nono's are eight ounces. So you're really getting a good amount of seasoning and a good value for the price. So I'm going to place the wings into my air fryer. I bake these, uh, not bake these, sorry. I air fry these at 400 degrees. I cooked them for about eight or nine minutes, turn them over, cook them for another eight or nine minutes until they were crispy and until they were at least 165 degrees internal temperature. Here are the wings and then we have the pasta salad and next I'll show you our plates. Here are the plates. So we have some of the chicken wings, the pasta salad, and then for my wings, I tossed them in a little bit of barbecue sauce. I also tasted just the wings with just the seasoning and no barbecue sauce. These were really yummy. That firecracker sea salt was delicious. These did have a little bit of a spice, but they weren't super, super spicy. But of course, if you want a little more spice, you could obviously add a little more of the seasoning. But this was our dinner this night. Really, really yummy. All right, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. And again, thank you to Auntie Nono's for sponsoring today's video. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And I hope you have a great rest of the day. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.